I think, you know, when we think about identity and technology now, uh, with artificial intelligence becoming more prevalent, uh, it's becoming really difficult to discern whether something is human or not. And we think this is a very, very big problem. Uh, when we look at the Web3 space, obviously, uh, blockchains, protocols are experiencing a lot of spams. Everybody's going for cheaper gas fees. Uh, when we look at, you know, airdrops, obviously, um, there's a lot of people which is farming these airdrops, writing scripts, creating as many bots as possible. Um, and then when we look at sort of the Web2 space, there's, you know, Twitter, where Elon almost backed out of buying it because he thought it's all bots. Uh, there's actually a lot. Um, and I think with ChatGPT, with deep fake video content being more and more prevalent, um, it's only going to be a bigger problem down the road. And so from our perspective at Humanity Protocol, um, we think that one of the core, core, core things for the Web3 industry to grow is, first and foremost, the ability to discern whether a blockchain address has a human being behind it or not. And as a res result of that, building the infrastructure to be able to check uh, whether even potentially your Twitter account or your email account actually has a person behind it. And so with Humanity Protocol, what we're focused on is building something we call proof of humanity. And the way we think about this is um, when we actually announced the project a couple months ago, uh, there were some headlines on Coindesk, on different sort of publications, saying that we're building the WorldCoin competitor. Um, we don't really think of ourselves as a WorldCoin competitor uh, because we think what we're trying to solve in terms of the problem is just much bigger. Um, they're largely focused on, on the EBI front. Obviously, they just launched a chain uh, trying to work with more crypto-native projects. What we think of ourselves as doing is actually building the identity graph uh, in an open and decentralized way, tackling some of the issues that even guys like Facebook, Google, Twitter, et cetera, et cetera, uh, have, right? And so we're separating uh, humanity protocol and the proof of humanity into two phases. The first phase, we're starting with what we're trying to do is, as a cross-chain human blockchain network. Uh, we're launching that as a ZK EVM layer two with natively inbuilt humanity attestation services. So natively, um, you can have normal addresses where it's anonymous and you can do whatever you want. Uh, but in addition to that, what we're also doing is adding the ability to, to check whether an address actually has a human being behind it or not. And all of this is completely private, uh, done with zero knowledge proofs, with reliable user verification uh, methods. In the phase two uh, of proof of humanity, what we're trying to do is actually add in what we call proof of human identity. Um, and by doing so, we want to actually add in other sort of verifiable credentials beyond just proving that you're a human being. So potentially your KYC information, potentially your uh, educational credentials, where you work, your medical records, different sort of things that we can securely encrypt and store on chain. And for projects that are building on humanity protocol to leverage, use, check against. And so when we think about the applications in the Web3 world, there are a lot, right? You know, I think WorldCoin is focused largely on UBI. The way we think about, you know, proof of humanity, and then later on with human identity, uh, we're solving for RWA issues, we're solving for uh, regulated uh, enterprise DeFi, on-chain games where you probably don't want to be playing against bots. Um, we're solving for decentralized social networks, or even like traditionally uh, centralized social networks, you really do want to be interacting with human beings rather than just a bunch of generated content from ChatGPT. All right, and then one of the big use cases is obviously uh, airdrops. Um, if we think about the Web2 world, where historically value accrual uh, happens because of users and human beings, um, you know, Facebook, Google, Twitter generates a lot of revenues because advertisers want to spend money on it um, because they have the attention of human beings. And human beings are consumers. Um, so you want to spend money to get their attention. I think with AI, it's be becoming more and more difficult. And in the Web3 world, it's actually pretty much impossible. All right, so what we're solving for is making sure that we can actually uh, ensure that a network, not just a network, but an application can also be civil-resisted. 
And the way we think about proving, uh, pr the, the way we think about proving somebody to be a human being, it's actually a really challenging problem. I think there have been quite a fair number of projects back in 2017, even back in the ICO days, that were thinking about identity chains, uh, different ways for uh, for proof of personhood. Um, there's obviously projects like Gitcoin that uses different sort of social graphs. Ultimately, I think with artificial intelligence, all these deep fakes and, 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 and generative AI, the only way we can really do it is actually through biometrics, right? Which is also the route that WorldCoin decided to take. Um, and what WorldCoin is doing with, uh, with biometrics, they decided to, to go with, uh, with the iris scan, uh, which I haven't done it. I have some friends who've done it. Um, but we think it's quite uh, dystopian. Um, it's accurate because everybody's iris is unique. Um, but what we decided to actually go with for phase one of a proof of humanity um, is actually palm recognition. So for those of you who are not familiar with it, um, your palm, there are two parts to it. There's your print, uh, which is your lines and creases on your palm, as well as the veins that are underneath. Uh, both of these things are completely unique to every single human being in the world. Um, as such, even companies like Amazon is using palm recognition for payments uh, at Whole Foods. Um, Tencent, the uh, Chinese internet conglomerate, is using your palm for, uh, for payments with, uh, with WeChat Pay in, in Shenzhen and a bunch of places. So this technology, and actually even Japan, has been using um, palm beam recognition uh, for banking and for ATM verification for the last two decades. So it's, it's a pretty mature technology. Um, not very familiar, uh, not very familiarized in, in, in the West, and not really widely adopted. But what we've decided to do is actually make use of it uh, for proof of personhood, right? And the reason why we've decided to use the palm is because we think it's number one much more scalable, and first and most importantly, it's something that we can use and do for a wide range of use cases that something like an iris cannot do. Uh, with an iris, there's obviously uh, stories of people lining up in villages in Nigeria and different sort of developing countries, scanning it, and then selling their world IDs. Um, because, you know, you can only really do it once. Whereas for us, uh, with palm recognition, it's something that you can do. We can use it for authentication. We can use it for verification. Um, we can use it for proof of humanity. In fact, um, later I'm, I'm going to give a quick demo uh, for, uh, for the technology that we have, which is tied to our, our DevNet. Um, and it, it's pretty cool, right? And so, you know, what, what I was saying really is for us, uh, the goal is not to build, uh, the goal is not to build a UBI platform. Uh, the goal is not to build sort of a closed platform for, uh, for a certain DID or for a certain uh, humanity network. What we're trying to do is build the infrastructure uh, for all of crypto with, you know, with humans being sort of the most important thing uh, to bring on board. Because ultimately, right now, there is you know, almost a billion wallets that have been created uh, on various blockchain networks. Uh, most people's best, and, and it's great, you know, as an industry, people like to talk about there's a billion wallets, different sort of protocols like to talk about how they have a million or two million or 10 million daily active wallets. Um, we all pretty much know that the, uh, the current market size uh, for Web3 is way smaller. Um, I myself probably control a good 2,000 wallets. Um, so. The, the idea for us is as, as Web3 matures and for there to be value, accre uh, value accrual, the most important thing is actually being able to recognize whether an address or an account actually has a human being behind it. So that's, that's yeah, and, and we think this is way beyond, you know, WorldCoin has done very well. They have a couple million people who who's signed up. Uh, we haven't actually launched yet. Um, we have our DevNet developed, uh, our testnet is launching in Q2, um, and we are now onboarding uh, verifier nodes to ensure that the network is sufficiently decentralized. Um, the verification of the, of the verifiable credentials is done by a wide number of uh, node operators. 
Um, so there, there's quite a fair bit of prep work over the next month or so before we launch the, uh, the testnet. But given the scalability of how we're onboarding people um, to start with largely a software-based solution, we actually think we can grow beyond the millions of number, millions of users uh, that you know, a Warcoin has in a relatively short period of time. And when it comes to sort of how we're trying to, uh, to work with the industry, one thing that we're very focused on is working with different sort of partners, whether it's game studios, uh, whether it's other protocols, um, other sort of infrastructure players, so that we can actually work together to provide civil resistance for, uh, for the entire Web3 ecosystem. So that's, uh, let me see. Yeah, so I mean, one, one thing that we're, 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 we, we pride ourselves in is designing the entire network to be way more decentralized from day one. And the way we think about this is that there are two sort of roles uh, within Humanity Protocol. There is the uh, identity validators, what we call issuers, um, that are issuing VCs to attest for the fact that you're a human being, or you, know, you went to the school, um, or this is your KYC. And then what we also have are verifiers um, that are coming to consensus for credential verification. Uh, they don't get to access any sort of data. It's completely privacy preserving. Um, it's self-sovereign identity for all the users. But what we're incentivizing is for verifiers to help us keep this network as decentralized as possible. So that's really Humanity Protocol. We've been working on this for almost a year. We only announced the project, I think, back in February. We also announced a, a, a fundraise from 20 odd you know, top tier VCs who are really excited uh, about what we're doing. Um, a lot of the names you guys would be familiar with. Um, and we're, we're launching the testnet very soon. We're targeting a mainnet launch towards the, the end of Q3 or beginning of Q4. Um, and you know, it's, it's super exciting because for us, it's going, there, number one, I think there's a lot of projects that are working on AI, working on restaking, working on DeFi. I think there are not that many projects that are focused on solving this problem uh, that really plagues everybody. Um, and so, you know, we, we, we're super excited about this. Feel free to, uh, to connect with me um, if you're interested to talk. Uh, before I go, I'm actually going to quickly do a demo. Um, this morning when I was with Raj, uh, we were playing around with the uh, DevNet. So I actually onboarded him and created a DID for him on our DevNet, uh, scanned his palm so that he actually now is a verified human being on the hum Humanity Protocol DevNet. Um, so I'm actually just going to quickly ask him to come up and, and show. Is there a camera? Camera can't see. Where's so, the, where's on, the on both sides, you can see it there. Where's the camera? Straight ahead. Where? Oh, they can, oh yeah. Here. Yeah. How would, wait, so, oh yeah. But they won't be able to see the screen, right? Oh, kind oh, of, yeah, there yeah. You go. Kind of, okay. <laughs> yeah, so we've actually built a verification app. Wait, maybe. This is, this is better. Uh, 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 uh. All right, I'm blocking. There you go. But the lighting is kind of bad. All right. Um, yeah, so we've built a verification app for, uh, for the DevNet. And what we can actually do, if I just actually sc scan my palm, what, you could actually see it recognizes me as Terrence Kwok. This is my, uh, my address. Um, and if Raj does it, you can get, I think you'll be blocking it, right? You can see go. it actually shows Raj and Demo, right? So what we're actually going to do with the test then as we launch is people can actually do this themselves. They can sign up. They can refer friends. There's going to be testnet tokens, points, quests, all that sort of stuff. We're going to be integrating with a bunch of partners for... Uh, we're going to be integrating with a bunch of partners to power their civil resistance for, for airdrops, for games. Um, so there's quite a fair bit of exciting stuff coming up. Um, our website is, oh, let me see. I'm not sure if I have it on here. Um, that's my vape. <laughs> Where is this? Oh, yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, so uh, that's our Twitter. Uh, that's actually my personal telegram, so feel free to ping me. Um, and then uh, our website, uh, that's the QR code for the website. Uh, the domain is cfh.xyz, which actually stands for Coins for Humanity. Because the way we think about it is, um, historically, we're, we're, if you look at the Web2 world, businesses are, are helping other businesses acquire customers. That's, that's what advertising is, right? And for us, if we can create the widest network of human beings, this essentially becomes a hub um, for customer acquisition, for all the other projects to, uh, to work with, partner with, airdrop to, um, hence, you know, it's coins for humanity. Uh, so that's Humanity Protocol. Thanks for, thanks for sticking around. I mean, it's, it's the last session for, uh, yeah. for today. Um, but yeah, do, do reach out if, um, if you're interested to talk. Thanks a lot.